Hey everybody, this is Peter with Tabletop Gaming Guild and today I'm coming to you with a card game review and the card game is Star Trek Flux. And so this is building off of the basic idea of the Flux game, which has been around now for quite some time. For those of you who may not know, it is a game where you start off very basic. Everybody's gonna start with three cards in their hand. They're gonna draw a card and they're gonna play a card. But some of those cards that get played are new rules. And those rules are gonna make the game a little bit more complex as it is played. Things are gonna continue to change and continue to be in Flux. Uh, so again, we're going to take a look at Star Trek Flux today, and we'll go down to the table, take a look at some of the cards that are there, talk about a little bit of the mechanics of the game itself, and then we'll come back up here and I'll tell you my thoughts on this particular version of Flux, Star Trek Flux. All right, let's go ahead and head down to the table and take a look. All right, so now that we're down here at the table, when you open up your box of Star Trek Flux, you're going to be getting a bunch of cards. There's 100 cards per box uh, of Flux, and in this game, you're going to have your action cards, your gold cards. You're going to get an ungold card, which uh, as far as I know is kind of a newer thing with the Star Trek box of Flux. I've never had this in a previous game of Flux that I've played. Uh, there are Keepers and Creepers. You have your surprise cards and you have your new rule cards as well as the basic flux rule card so again like i said earlier uh, the way that flux is played it starts off with this basic rule card where you're going to draw one and you're going to play one but as you play these new rule cards can get added into the game causing the game to become a little bit more uh, complex you've got cards like it sets hand limits of hand limit of one you might have cards that come out that give each player free actions during their turns. So you have recycling once during your turn. You may discard one of your keepers from the table to draw three extra cards. Uh, you can just have a, have one in there that's draw three cards. So if this was in play, it would just cover up the draw one and now it would just be draw three every time you play. Uh, or you might have one like this one, which is play four, which again, it says on the card replaces the play one card rule so some cards are going to go over and they're going to um, negate these original basic rules or they're going to be in addition to um, but you never want to actually get rid of this card it stays out just in case you ever get a card that deletes all of the new rules that got added to the game and then there's always the actions that you can have and again some of these are going to be specific to the star trek universe uh, specifically, we have the Fizbin card, uh, and it's got all of the text here about what it does. And this is in reference to uh, an episode of Star Trek where Captain Kirk actually creates and makes up a game called Fizbin, uh, where he's just trying to pretty much mess with the mind of one of the bad guys uh, and have a fun time. So there's a bunch of rules like that. Again, some of them are actions that you would see in any game of flux. And then some of them are going to be very specific, uh, to the star Trek universe time vortex, throw that in there and a lot of good stuff. So then you also have, uh, your keepers, which are the cards that you are trying to gain in your play area so that you can meet some of the goals and hopefully win the game. So a lot of the keepers are going to be your uh, characters from the show. And if they are part of the crew, then they have this little Star Trek symbol here that is on everybody's uniforms, as you can see throughout. And they are going to be your keepers. And those are your crew keepers. Then there are also keepers that are not crew keepers. They are called um, equipment keepers. And so they have this little symbol down here at the bottom of of the cards themselves and you've got a lot of good ones i mean you got the uss enterprise there the tricorder shuttlecraft set your facers to sun you know guardian of forever and then you do have creepers that get mixed into the game as well creepers are the cards that as you draw them you have to immediately play them in your play area you can't not and most of them are going to uh, negate your ability of winning by meeting the goals except for the few goals in the deck that actually might require you to have one of the keepers now there are ways to get rid of some of these creepers as you're playing the game 
And one of those ways here in the Star Trek game is actually going to be one of the keepers, and that is the phaser. During your turn, you may discard any one creeper in play. And that doesn't have to just be your creeper. That can be a creeper on, in somebody else's play area if you would rather them not have that anymore. Um, so each of these cards, not all of them, but some of them have very specific abilities that you can use during your turn. Uh, a really good example of that is the transporter. And that is during your turn, you may put any one keeper on the table into your hand, which is pretty awesome. And also, there are, uh, there's an action in here that is a, a beam me up Scotty kind of uh, action that allows the person who has the transporter, if the action that if that action card is played, uh, it will actually draw all of the crew members from the table who are the keepers out there to that person's keeper uh, play area on their table. Uh, which is pretty, pretty uh, OP and fun. So I think that's awesome. And again, there is an ungoal card in this game as well. And that is the Doomsday. And it says, if each player has had the Doomsday machine and no one has the Enterprise, all players lose. And uh, the way that different players would get this one is it has... Um, there are ways that it will move around the table. So rather than it being able to be discarded, the rules say that if you would discard this card, you can't, you pass it to the next player in, in turn order. And so if this would actually make it all the way around the table and everybody would have had the Doomsday card and nobody at that time has the Enterprise on their in their play area, the game's over, everybody loses. Um, so it's a pretty interesting card. I'm not a huge fan of the mechanic, um, but it is it's it's interesting for sure. Um, and then you also have surprise cards, and surprise cards are going to be exactly that. You can play them uh, out of turn or on turn, and depending on when you do that, it has different abilities. Uh, so, for example, here real quick, surprise veto out of turn. So if it's not your turn, somebody else's, you can discard a new rule another player has just played, thus preventing it from ever taking effect. Or if you play it during your turn, you can discard your choice of up to two new rules currently in play. And this card can also just cancel other surprise cards. So you can use them to surprise, uh, cancel other people's surprise cards. So there's the surprise, the creepers, there's the transporters, uh, the keepers, I mean. Uh, there's the ungoal card and there are the goal cards. The goal cards, of course, are a big part of the game where whichever goal cards are currently out on the table, that is what people are trying to get to win the game. So if this was the current goal on the table, secret feelings, then you were you would be trying to get the keeper of Spock and Chapel in your play area to win the game. And the first person who gets the right keepers and the right goal all at the same time ends up winning the game. And so that is Star Trek Flux. And again, if you've played Flux before, it's not a ton different from any of the other Fluxes, though it does have, again, the flavor of Star Trek mixed in, which is a lot of fun. So uh, now that we have taken a look at the cards, uh, let's go ahead and go back up and I will tell you my feelings about this game. All right, so now that we've looked at some of the cards and the mechanics of the game for Star Trek Flux, uh, I'm just going to give you my thoughts on it. I think Star Trek Flux is a lot of fun. Um, again, it's it's I like Flux in and of itself, so I think it's, it's a fun game. But I love the idea that they continue to bring out more that have to do with the different uh, intellectual properties, the different cultural phenomenons that we have uh, had over the years and star trek is huge star trek has been around for a very long time and there's a lot of people out there who it means something to them and they do a really fun job of of integrating some of those things into the game itself um i got to play the game with some friends recently and one of them specifically had a blast with uh, the Fizzbin card. They thought it was hilarious. They were remembering remembering the moment from the show where Captain Kirk is actually um, trying to play a card game or make up a fake card game in order to uh, thwart some of the bad guys uh, in the show. And so it, 
as that moment plays out, those people who have those memories are going to love those moments in the game itself. It's almost, it's almost going to take them out of the game of Flux for a second, but that's okay because that's kind of the point. Uh, it's the nostalgia factor. It's the remembering of things um, that mean something to you. And so uh, Star Trek Flux, I think, is another great addition to the Flux genre, the Flux game itself. Um, so it, pl it plays really, really, really well. Um, the, the creepers are interesting. I think the thing that plays into it for me uh, that I thought was really interesting as well was the, the fact that, you know, we, when we looked at the cards, we saw that there were those, uh, the keepers who are crew members and keepers that are equipment. Um, I like that aspect of it. Um, so yeah. And the one thing that's still not super huge for me, which I pointed out in the cards as well is the ungoals. Um, but that's okay. Uh, there's not, not everything is always going to be perfect. And that is the one part of this game that I'm not a huge fan of. I'm just not hundred percent sold on it. Um, but everything else is a lot of fun. A lot of great actions, a lot of great keepers. The art is always, uh, I think top notch. I enjoy the art, uh, that they, uh, put into the flux games and especially into the star Trek flux game. So, uh, overall, I think this is a really, really fun game, especially if you want to get a decent player count going, cause you can play again, you can play up to, uh, six players for this. You can play as little as two. I feel like the two player game usually plays really, really quickly. Uh, but as soon as you add that third or fourth player into the mix, the game can, um, go a little longer and can be a little bit more, uh, complex and interesting. So, uh, if you're looking for a quick two player game, I think you can't go wrong with this. It's a great two player game real quick, just super simple. Um, and, uh, if you play with a few more people, it'll go a little bit longer, but again, not overbearingly long, I don't think so. Um, but yeah, so those are my thoughts on Star Trek Flux. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, if you like the Flux games and you like Star Trek, this is a no brainer. Um, so definitely go and check this out. Uh, if you're just looking to get introduced to Flux for the first time, Star Trek Flux would be a great way to do that if you would like. Um, but again, there's so many different versions of Flux out there. There's probably one for you uh, if you just go take a look. So definitely check out Star Trek Flux. These are done by Looney Labs um, and there's a ton of them. So definitely check them out. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, give it a subscribe and check out all of our other videos, uh, reviews, playthroughs. We have a podcast that you can uh, listen to as well. So just check out everything Tabletop Gaming Guild is doing at our website, tabletopgamingguild.com. And uh, if you have any things that you want to mention in the comments, you can put those in the comment section below this video. But again, thank you for watching everybody. And until we talk again, keep on playing games.